Hi, this is Don Allen. Uh, today we're going to look at the trapezoidal rule for a, a integral approximation, and we're also going to look at the Simpson's rule and the Simpson 3 8 rule for uh, comparison. So let's begin. This is a maple worksheet which is posted. And we begin. We need the plots package. Our goal is to approximate the integral from a to b f of x uh, dx. <coughs> this process is called quadrature. Any process that approximates integrals is called quadrature. It involves a computation of a function at a selected number of points. The points are determined by the uh, method under consideration um, and we first consider the trapezoidal rule and then the other two. Uh, this is a worksheet that you can use by changing the function, but what you'll need is the function, the endpoints, and the number of points, which is n plus 1, you enter the number of subintervals. So if you're thinking of three points, x0, x1, and x2, you would enter 2, because that's the number of subintervals. First we show the function, then the quadrature points, then the trapezoids. After that we compute the approximate integrals. Below you'll see a collection of functions that we'll consider, and of course Maple uh, is uh, it uses the last one it sees, so let's take a look. So we're going to be approximating the integral of the uh, e to the 2x from minus, a, from minus 2 to 3, and we're going to look at six subdivisions. That's not very many, but let's see how we do on this. Uh, the first part of the routine computes the points. The next part of the routine uh, sets up the plots. So this is what the function looks like. It is uh, a wildly uh, not a wildly varying function, but it's an exponentially growing function. And uh, polynomials don't like exponentially growing functions, so we might expect bad things to happen. Let's check. Those are the points we're taking. Uh, there are seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And uh, let's take a look at the trapezoids, or the uh, stepwise, uh, piecewise linear function that we're looking at. And finally, uh, the trapezoids that we'll be computing. Now let's compute the approximate integral. You could expect it to be bigger because all the trapezoids sit on top of the function. Let's take a look. As you can see, the approximate integral is 246. The actual integral is uh, about 201. And the error is very big. But the function is uh, not conducive to so few points. Now let's look at the Simpson's rule. Let's consider this carefully. We don't look at uh, pairs of points now, as in the trapezoids. We look at triples of points, and we fit a quadratic to them, as we've discussed in uh, previous videos. Uh, this implies that the number of subdivisions must be even. And the routine that we uh, have written here checks to see that that number is even, otherwise it won't compute. But since n is 6, it will compute. So let's check. As you can see, the uh, approximate uh, integral is now 208, and the actual integral is 201. The error of approximation is uh, 6.4, and if you compare that, with 44.6, it's very good. Now let's look at the Simpson's 3 8 rule. It's based on interpolating uh, the function by a cubic, 
based on groups of four successive points. That is, uh, three subintervals. Uh, note, therefore, that the uh, number of sub subdivisions must be a multiple of three. This means we cannot compare Simpson's rule and Simpson's three-eighths rule unless the number of subdivisions is a multiple of two and three. The code below checks on that. So let's take a look. Here we have the approximate integral is to about 213, and the actual integral is the same. The error approximation is 11.57. Uh, Not too good, but now let's go and increase the number of points way back to the beginning, and we'll change n equal to 12. That's a multiple of 2 and 3. So both of the Simpson's rules will work. And let's take a look. Same function, but now more points. There are 13 points. And those are the trapezoids. They're much, much closer to the actual function. And those are the, uh, those, those are the, uh, the trapezoids, rather. Uh, and uh, let's see how the approximations look. In this case, the uh, error of approximation is down to 11. But for Simpson's rule, since uh, 18 is divisible by 2, it works. Uh, the error of approximation is now 0.49. Very, very good. And the, uh, for the Simpson 3 eighths rule, the error of approximation is 1.04. Uh, in most circumstances, the Simpson 3 eighths rule does not do as well as the Simpson rule. So let's bump up the number of points once again. This time we'll go to, uh, say, 24. That's doubling the number, I mean, doubling the number of subintervals. And so let's just check it out. That's the function again. Many more points now twice the number of subintervals and those are the that's the piecewise linear function that approximates it almost indistinguishable from the function but let's see what the whole thing looks like those are the trapezoids you're now seeing now let's compute the uh, approximate integrals now uh, the approximation is still not very good it's the error is about 2.9. But for the Simpsons rule, we do better. It's now uh, 0 0.03. Now that's quite good for 24 points and a function that's very, very unlike um, a quadratic or even bunches of quadratics. And the Simpsons rule also gives a very small error of approximation, but comparing them we have 0 0.033 versus 0 0.07, and then comparing uh, the Simpson with the trapezoidal, it's 0 0.03 with 2.9. So that was pretty interesting. You can see uh, that almost always, as you increase the number of points, the error decreases. And we can prove this, uh, and uh, it's all in the textbook. At this point, let's change the function. Let's look at the sine function. That's a pretty medium function, and I'm just going to move it over here. We'll take the same interval. We'll go back to six points, like that. Let's see what we got. So we're looking at the sine function, the interval minus 2 to 3. And that's the way it looks over that interval. Those are the points we're selecting with the, uh, the black circles there. Now let's take a look at the trapezoids, uh, not the trapezoids, but the step function that we're looking at. There it is. Not too good. But you'll notice that the error on the left side is uh, 
is uh, the function is uh, more negative than uh, the step function and on the right side it's more positive. So we're going to have some canceling errors. Let's take a look at the trapezoids. There they are. Of course the part on the left is going to be negative error, negative integral. The part on the right is going to be positive integral. Uh, the error of approximation in this particular case is uh, 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 0 0.03 in the trapezoidal rule, which is good, uh, and that's only because things cancel out, as I showed you with the trapezoids. For the Simpsons rule, the approximate error is very, very good. It's uh, 0 0.001, and for the Simpsons rule, it's point zero. I mean, the Simpson three eighths rule is point zero zero four. So that's quite good. And if we bump up the number of subdivisions, the approximation gets vastly better for the Simpson and Simpson three eighths rule. It also gets better for the trapezoidal rule. In fact, let's just take a look. Let's just double the number of subdivisions. There we go. There's the function once again, sine function. Those are the points we're looking at. Those, that's the stepwise approximation to the function that we'll be actually be computing the integral of. Not stepwise, but piecewise linear. Those are the trapezoids you're seeing. And now let's look at the integral. So in this case, the approximate uh, uh, integral is very close to the actual integral, 0 0.008. But now look at the Simpson's rule. It's uh, 0 0.00009. Very, very good. And the, uh, the Simpson 3 eighths rule also gives a very good approximation. OK. Let's look at our next candidate. It will be a cubic. Now what you'll expect from the cubic is that both the Simpson's rule and Simpson's 3 eighths rule should be exact because uh, those rules interpolate cubics and we have a cubic. So let's take a look. We'll start with six points only. So now our function is 0.7x cubed minus x squared minus 3x plus 5. Let's set up our plots and display them. That's what the function looks like. It's a cubic function. Those are the points, 7.6 subintervals. Those That's the piecewise linear approximation to uh, that we'll be looking at. And now. Those are the trapezoids that we'll be computing the areas of. And when we do that, we get a very good um, error of approximation for the trapezoidal rule. It's 0 0.02. And for uh, such a wildly varying function, that's good. But you'll notice that there is compensating error. Here it's bigger. Here it's less. And, and that happens on functions like that. Now let's take a look at the Simpson's rule. Now you can see the error is essentially machine 0. Uh, it comes up 0.1. Well, it's 10 to the minus 8th. And for the Simpson's 3 eighths rule, it's actually 0 in this case. Uh, it got it exactly. And that's what happens with the Simpson's rule. For a cubic, if we double the number of points again to 12, the trapezoidal rule, there's the, uh, there's the points we're going to interpolate at. That's the piecewise linear function. And there are the trapezoids we're computing the areas of. And uh, in this case, uh, the trapezoidal rule gives 0 0.007. However, Simpson's rule does better, gives us uh, the same value as before. And the uh, Simpson 3 eighths rule gives us an error of 0. So the story here is that 
you don't want to use Simpson's rule. You want to use one of these higher order rules. I mean, you don't want to use trapezoidal rule. You want to use one of the higher order rules to get good approximations. Basically, you have the same number of uh, points you evaluate at. It's just how you use the points. Now, there are hi higher order rules uh, in the game. And those are the Newt Newton Coates formulas. And basically, they involve looking at uh, higher order approximations to groups of points. And there's quite a lot written on this. However, uh, these formulas uh, are generally not used in practice. And uh, in a future video, we'll look at better ones. OK, that's all for now.